guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna go through Thinkorswim platform. So I opened a brand new account. I'm just gonna go through how you set up um, the Thinkorswim platform. When I first started trading, I was just trading solely on my MacBook. So I'm gonna show you guys how I had that day trading set up. And then when I added an additional monitor, how I had that set up as well. And how you can add Active Trader or trade on your mobile phone, whatever you decide to do. I'll kind of show you guys the variations in that as well. And then how you add indicators and customize the entire setup our platform for your day trading needs I also want to just apologize for this delayed video um, I know I've been kind of absent on YouTube I was sick last week I wasn't able to get a video recorded so I apologize about that but I do have a lot of content for you guys upcoming and yeah thank you for sticking with me and let's just go ahead and get started all right guys so as you can see here I've created a completely new account um, so brand new account here and this is what you will see when you open a new um, thinkorswim account so you'll have to agree to all of these disclosures here so you want to check agree to all accept and proceed and then you can see the entire platform here so so this is basically what you see when you first open the platform. If we go to charts, so charts are completely blank here. So I'm just gonna open a random stock. So I'm gonna open Tesla. So when you first open um, any stock, uh, so when you first open any chart, you'll see it just like this. So this is, these are the default settings for any chart that you open on Thinkorswim. So how I would set up my Thinkorswim on my Mac is I would have a watch list of four to six stocks. When I first started, it was four, and then as I continued on my MacBook, I grew it to six. So this is the default when you open any chart here on Thinkorswim when you first open the account. I have Tesla open here, so I'm gonna show you first of all how I edit my chart. I'm gonna go ahead and click chart settings here and these are all of your chart settings so this is where you can edit your charts to look however you want them to look so how I would edit my charts is so the first thing that I want to do is I don't use these volume bars down here if you like to use the default volume bars here on thinkorswim you can definitely keep them uh, you can overlap the volume here so if you overlap and apply it'll come up on the chart as well um, and then I can uncheck and apply again it'll come off you can also with these uh, volume bars if you go to appearance you can make the volume bars green and red and um you can make the volume bars the same as the color of the um candlestick so if you apply it it'll be green and red down here as well so if you want to use the default volume volume bars that's how you edit it if you don't want to use the default volume bars what you want to do which i don't use them i'll go to equities uncheck show volume subgraph options uncheck it Futures, uncheck it, Forex, uncheck it. I would apply it, gets rid of that those volume bars down there. Then what I do is I'll go to uh, appearance here and you can do a couple of things. So you can fill um, the volume candles. I usually don't have them filled, but you can fill them as well. I'm just gonna keep them filled for uh, presentation sake. And then I get rid of the grid bars, uh, grid lines behind the charts. I think it's a lot cleaner that way if you don't see the grid lines. However, if you struggle with charting, I do recommend keeping the grid lines on there. That way it'll kind of help you uh, chart a little bit better. When I first started, it did help me chart a little bit better uh, with the grid lines because you can see the levels a lot clearly, a lot more clearly. So you can go here, uncheck grid and apply. So it'll get rid of the grid. Now, the next thing is these red lines here are the expiration friday so you want to go to um time axis here and you want to uncheck show expiration friday once you uncheck that and apply it it will get rid of that now these little icons down here show you when the stock reported earnings so you can take that off as well or you can leave them on i usually just leave them on and then it shows the year marking lines as well you can also take those off if you'd like so if you take uncheck show year marking lines it will get rid of that year i actually kind of like that on there so i know i don't get rid of the year marking lines so this is basically how i set up my charts when it's defaulted so it's literally just looks like this before I chart my stocks so then I go and I'll add all of my studies so if you go into studies up here edit studies and you can add whatever studies you want so I'll add my VWAP and I'll edit that in a second and then I'll add my moving averages um, 
exponential. So I had two exponential moving averages, so I'll just double click. If you double click, it just automatically adds it. And then I'll add my volume average to look at volume. Double click, adds it. Then I'll go through and I'll edit these. So VWAP, I don't like to see the upper and lower lines. So upper band, I'll uncheck all of these here. And lower band, I'll uncheck all of these here. Okay. And then my exponential moving averages, I like to change the colors. Uh, so my 90 is usually orange. Okay. And then I'll change this to 21 day. And this one I usually make yellow. So I edit all of my um, studies here and then I'll apply. All the studies pop up just like that. So these are all my studies here. This is exactly how my charts look before obviously they're charted. Um, there's, so there's no support or resistance lines here. Now, when I'm looking to add support or resistance lines, what you want to do, there's two ways you can do it. You can either right click on your um, mouse and you go to add a drawing or you can click the middle cursor on your mouse and you add whatever drawings you want here or you can go into drawings up here drawing tools and then this little dollar sign is the price level so that's where you add your support and resistance levels so say I'm trying the 900 level here on Tesla and whoops so the default um, price levels are this color right here. So this is what they look like. If you right click and edit properties, you can change how they look. You can change the left extension, right extension. So I extend mine to the right side. I keep the left extension off just to keep my uh, charts a little bit cleaner. You can leave the left extension on because it'll help you see how many times that level has hit on that stop. Uh, so it's a little bit helpful for newer traders as well. I always change the colors, uh, so I'll leave mine white and mine is usually dotted and with a one. So you want to, before you are done, if this is how you want to save them for future reference, you want to click save as default, okay, and then it'll automatically change all of the ones that you currently have and the next time you add a price level, it'll automatically apply it the way that you had. So the next thing you want to do is you want to actually save these chart settings and save these studies. So you'll go to studies, save study set, and you can name it whatever you want. I usually name mine day trading studies. Okay, save it. So once you save the study set and you go to open another chart, let's say I open another chart. So if you want to open multiple charts up here, it'll show you the grid and how many charts you have open. So I usually keep six for my day trading um, if I'm just on my MacBook or I'll keep it limited if you want to keep it really tight to four. Four is probably what I recommend if you're a newer trader. And if you open the next stop, your study should still, your, that study that you save should be there. So you go to load, study set, day trading study so all your studies are there however when you're first setting up your thinkorswim platform it's a newer platform and you don't have the overall setup saved you do have to edit each chart that you have up uh, you've added the chart settings like we did so we'll have to go into chart settings um we'll have to uncheck show volume subgraph on all of them and I'll show you, you only have to do this once when you first come up and then you'll save your uh, study sets, what I'll show you in a second. Appearance, uh, you want to get rid of grid, time axis, so expiration Fridays, apply, gets rid of it. And you want to do that on all of them as you open them. Let's see, let's go and open spy on this one. Um, so we'll go uncheck all of these. Appearance uncheck the grid, time axis, uncheck this, apply, okay. Appearance, uncheck grid, time axis, uncheck, apply, okay. And then, you, again, so you already have your study saved, so you go to studies, load study set, day trading studies, studies, load study set, day trading studies. So all your studies are up, this is how it works. Now, depending on how many stocks that you wanna watch throughout the day, like I said, on mine, I usually have six like this. Sorry, six. And I'll have all of them up. So let's say Amazon, 
and I want to watch so when I first started trading I would just watch four of these I would have time and sales up and I would have level two just like this so time and sales level two time and sales level two I didn't use level two when I first started trading but I want to show you guys how you can put it up so this is exactly how my charts would look I would have four charts kind of zoom in here and you can edit how you uh, big you want level two and time and sales just drag it down so your chart looks bigger and make sure you can see those volume bars as well so you have to drag it down a little bit um, drag this down and drag this down so that's why you don't want too many stocks when you're first starting off and you just have a laptop um, because then it gets kind of overwhelming with having the thinker swim I'm sorry having uh, time and sales and level two up it can kind of um, take away from the chart as well so you don't want too much of that so you don't want too much noise on your charts you want to keep it pretty simple when you first start out and you can see everything's added so this is exactly how my thinkorswim platform looks on my macbook solely on my macbook so once you have your setup for your day trading on your macbook or whatever on even your um screen what you want to do is you want to go to setup here and you want to save workspace as so once you save workspace as so day trading and name this day trading five because there's I have it. so you save your um uh you go to setup you said save workspace as save it day trading five and once you save your setup anytime that you open thinkorswim this is the setup that will automatically populate for you and if you do change your setup say you want to watch six stocks that day or you're um you know on a on your screen or whatever the case may be you just go to setup and you click on whichever setup you want so you can see here i have multiple different setups so let's just click on my mossy option six so this is when i usually watch six stocks on my macbook i'll click it it'll ask you if you want to load that setup okay and there you go so it automatically loads that setup for you this is usually how my setup looks um, when i'm solely trading on my mac like i said if you're new i only recommend watching four stocks at a time because then you can also watch time and sales it's a little harder to watch time and sales in level two when you have too many stocks on your mac um, however if you're able to do it then definitely go ahead i usually watch six just like this so you can see all of my studies are saved on this one i don't have vwap that's why you don't see the vwap line um, but all my studies are saved you can even save it on the time frame so you can see all of the time frames are one minute this one was 15 minute when it was saved one minute one minute and that's how it'll save so you always want to make sure that you save your workspace as save it and anytime that you open it so i'll have i have a three one as well so click on that one and this is how i'll watch this three so when i'm just solely trading on my macbook i have six like i showed you guys before if i'm trading on a macbook and my pc so say you have a macbook and you have one uh, monitor how i'll usually set my macbook up is the top three or four stocks that i'm watching i'll set my macbook to the five minute chart on those stocks so you can see all of these stocks are the five minute chart so so currently whenever i watch my macbook i just have three stocks up and i'll have the five minute on each and these three stocks are my main watches for the day um because i do like to watch the five minute and the one minute as well so watch the one minute on my main, main uh, monitor and then I'll watch the five minute on my MacBook. And that's exactly how I'll do it. So you can see the five minutes are saved here. Um, so currently how I trade is I have my MacBook, I have two monitors and my MacBook is just showing me this. Now, when I first started, like I said, I had my MacBook set to six like this and I would just watch the six stocks that I'm watching right here. Um, and then on here, if I wanted to watch the five minutes, say, exam say for example, I want to trade Amazon, I'll change one of these charts. So I'll change this chart to Amazon and I'll change it to the five minute and you can get rid of level two. So just update it that way. Okay. And that's pretty much how my thinkorswim is set up. Now, there are a couple different things I can do. So if you have just a MacBook, I do recommend um, trading off of your phone. It's a lot easier. That's how I would do it. So I had my MacBook, I would watch my stocks, and then all of my fills were made through my phone. 
so all of my order executions were made through my phone which made it a lot easier because I didn't have to click back and forth on my MacBook because obviously if you're here if you don't have Active Trader set up uh, you would have to go back and forth into the trade tab and back to the charts as you're watching to close the position and stuff which is a, a little bit more tedious um, and as a scalper or a day trader you want to get the most optimal entry and exit points so you definitely want I did I do recommend definitely trading on your mobile phone it's a lot easier when you just have a MacBook now if you have a MacBook and you have say for example another monitor what you can do is you can keep those three stocks on your MacBook watch the five minute on those and then however many stocks that you're watching on the on your monitor and what you can do is you can set up active trader on your macbook so this is a lot easier so you'll have active trader and you can set up the active trader here on your macbook so however you want to edit your active trader you can go ahead and edit it that make sure that you know the contract that you're watching is up here and so on and so forth and that's how you can edit um your MacBook if you want to watch uh, Active Trader. So say for example you don't want to trade on your phone and you just have your MacBook I do um, and you want to use Active Trader I do recommend just watching a maximum of three stocks and then have Active Trader on the bottom row so let's get rid of this, add Active Trader, get rid of this, add Active Trader. So what you can have is you'll have all the three stocks that you're watching for the day, your main three stocks and then you'll have their active trader um, links down here as well so that you can buy as you're watching a lot easier so this is another way you can set this up have your three stocks that you're watching for the day and then have the active trader down below if you don't want to use mobile execution this is another way that you can do it you're just limited to the number of stocks um, don't crowd your don't crowd your screen with so many stocks if you're just on a macbook because what hap what happens is you'll end up missing certain plays. You won't be able to see the screen as properly as you would have if you had limited the number of stocks that you're watching. This is a perfect example. I think this is a great way to trade when you first start as well um, because you should only be watching a very small amount of stocks on your watch list that we have a stock, have this active trader, stock, active trader, stock, active trader. Um, like I said, the other way is you watch more stocks and your mobile execution. So if you do have an extra monitor, you can also set it up like this or just have active trader completely on your MacBook and have that one monitor watching all of your stocks. Um, that's also another way to do it. You'll have to trade obviously on your MacBook watch while you watch your monitor. but. I always recommend keeping your executions and what you're watching a little bit separated either on two monitors or how I have it here. I think this is really nice as well. Very clean here um, and easy to read, easy to kind of adjust whatever you need to adjust when you're day trading. All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and comment down below or shoot me a DM on Instagram or Twitter. And yeah, I'll see you guys in next week's video. Bye.